Welcome back, everyone. It's me, Matt. Thanks so much for joining me today. We're talking about Shorat, Short Range Air Defense. And no, we're not going to be seeing this helicopter blasted out the sky. I just recently did a video on the MI8, MI17. But no, this is just purely a training scenario working alongside the Avenger Air Defense System, otherwise known as the ANTWQ-1, which is, in all honesty, just a huge Stinger Pack module with a 50 caliber on the back of a Humvee. But there's a lot more to it than that. And we want to talk a little bit about its capability and its, uh, you know, overall resources that it can provide on the battlefield, which in today's climate is extremely valuable as an asset because it is giving huge amounts of low-level air cover, which is, as you know, with Ukraine, pretty, pretty serious at the moment. We've seen a lot of footage of helicopters and low-flying aircraft getting unfortunately engaged by all sorts of man pads and short-range air defense, and this vehicle is definitely going to see a lot more service life I believe in the future potentially going to be used in the Ukrainian conflict which as many of you know I cannot talk about now the platform itself um, has been around for quite some time we're going to go over its features but before we go into today's video I would strongly encourage you guys to please click the little bell by the subscribe button so you can be notified of any upcoming content also please go check out my Instagram page I know a lot of you have recently been uh, following me on Instagram I would really appreciate that go check me out um, the link is in the description box below and I can actually interact and chat with you more on there if you have any questions or want to have more of a personal one-to-one -one, that's the place you can do it so let's get into the Avenger air defense system now the United States has used this for as I said a pretty long period of time but it is probably their most advanced mobile short-range air defense system it was designed in order to provide operators with fast and accurate protection against low altitude threats such as unmanned aerial vehicles helicopters and fixed-wing aircraft the system consists of the M1097 Humvee Launcher and the ANTQ-1 Fire Distribution Center, which is basically the rotating cab you see on the back there looks almost like some sort of alien pod. This allows the vehicle to host four Stinger missile launchers and a 50 caliber machine gun. The system is also equipped with a wide range of sensors including infrared cameras, radar detectors and laser warning receivers. Specifically, the vehicle also has its own entity or own Humvee, I guess, with its own radar warning unit on it, which allows the vehicles to link integrally with a network of other Humvees or Avengers with a radar net, I guess, so to speak, that's wider and broader than which of this particular vehicle will have. These components are integrated together to provide the comprehensive air surveillance and defense capabilities for the battle group, or specifically more to the flanks of a battle group, because they wouldn't push these forward too far. They want them to provide you know, aerial protection to the sides of a attacking or opposing force, and they'll have a few to the front for the most part. These are sort of shoot and scoot, providing sort of that uh, intricacy between each gap of a battle group, but there's large battle group forces. And of course, in the 1990s, uh, they were looking at this sort of across the spectrum of militaries around the world, including ADATs, uh, which is a very expensive platform, whereas Stinger is a lot cheaper. You know, the Stinger missiles are a shorter range missile, but provide just as much capability of that which ADATs would have provided back in the day. The overall design is very modular though, as you can see with the little guy inside of this pod here, it's allowing the vehicle to actually change out pods if necessary, which means if you need to change, uh, you know, a radar system onto the back of the Humvee, because it does have its own radar dish, or just the straight pod with the stingers that you're seeing in just the man pad configuration there, you can do it quite quickly, which allows it to be very easily customizable to the user's need. In addition, the system can be rapidly deployed due to its very lightweight nature of its components, which is really important with something like this. Or again, talking about the ADATs, it's a track vehicle, it was a lot more beefy at the time using that Bradley platform. Uh, track vehicles inherently being more difficult to fly uh, on larger aircraft. With the Humvee, you can put this thing just about anywhere, including throwing off the back of a plane if you wish to, working with airborne assault. When it comes to cost, the Avenger Air Defense System is one of the most affordable options on the market today. The initial investment of purchasing and installing the system can be relatively expensive, however this cost is offset by the long-term savings that come from having improved air surveillance and defense capabilities. Additionally, the system's modular design allows for easier customization which can help keep the cost down. Now in terms of advantages and disadvantages, the Avenger System offers quite a few positives when it comes to defending against low altitude threats. 
One of the primary focuses, as I mentioned before, is it's lightweight and very easily deployable, allowing it to work with infantry or armored battle groups very quickly, and even in airborne scenarios where they want to put troops behind lines, this can actually do some serious damage to aircraft in the sky. This makes it very ideal for sort of shock troop or sort of, I guess, light battalion recon uh, that can actually use these behind uh, locations where they wouldn't normally have heavy assets such as, you know, Patriot, things like that. The great thing with the Stinger is it can take out just about anything with its heat seeking capability it can find targets very quickly seek them and take them down without a huge amount of cost with a small warhead you're doing just as much damage with something flying than with a gigantic explosive that some of the more sophisticated systems use the missile is the FIM-92 Stinger, which many of you have probably heard of before, and it is a two-stage solid fuel self-homing missile with infrared guidance. It is a fire and forget type weapon, has a maximum speed of around Mach 2.2, which is more than enough to engage low-flying aircraft, fitted with a high explosive fragmentation warhead. The range of fire and altitude depends on the missile model. The maximum range of fire is normally between 4 to 8 kilometers and a maximum altitude of 3.5 to 3.8 kilometers, which personally I believe is very formidable for any aircraft coming across in your particular kill zone. I don't think you're going to have to worry about too much when you've got a missile going at Mach 2.2, ranging up to 8 kilometers or 3.5 kilometers in height. The Avenger can launch its missiles in stationary or on the move. Now, not at high speed, may I add. It has to be fairly slow and steady, but it does have a gyroscope on that module to allow it to engage targets up to a maximum speed of 35 kilometers an hour, which again, considering the uh, balance required to keep tracking onto something, it's pretty interesting that it can do that. The system has a high degree of hit probability with one single missile. During trials, the Avenger managed to hit 171 targets out of 178. A full set of eight reloaded missiles can be carried inside the vehicles, and missiles are reloaded manually within roughly three minutes, depending on the context of when you're actually reloading. If you're in an actual war scenario, that can be done a lot quicker, but there are a number of checks you need to do in more of a training scenario. The vehicle is also fitted with a 12.7mm machine gun which is used against air and ground targets. There's a total of around 200 rounds fitted on board but can be easily changed on the fly if necessary. One of the key parts of having that 50 caliber machine gun on the side of the vehicle is it's able to be easily maintained. Machine guns need oiling, they need maintenance, they need barrels changed, and when you're putting a number of rounds down range on say drones, which is particularly what this machine gun is designed for, you may need to change out those barrels or give it a little bit more of a TLC than necessary with some oil and whatnot, or even just reload. Because when you're engaging aerial targets, you know, it does take a lot of bullets sometimes to actually track and engage something. The Avenger has a highly automated fire control system and is equipped with an optical tracker and forward-looking infrared system that is able to track that target in all sorts of nasty weather engagements. It also has a friend or foe identification system to allow it to not do any potential friendly fire situations, and alternatively, targeting data is provided by the Ford Area Air Defense Radar, which is a separate Humvee elsewhere. The air defense system normally has a crew of two, including the driver and operator, and as you can see here, these two are preparing to reload the Stinger missiles into the pods, which is a fairly quick process. As you can see, these crew members are doing this more of in a training environment, so they're taking a little bit more time. But as I mentioned, they do have access and quick access to that 50 caliber to change out the barrel or whatever else they need to do. And you'll see the appropriate storage of ammunition, etc. is all over this vehicle. It's a Humvee. You've got tons of room to put all sorts of different things that you want to put on there. And the ammunition itself, you know, you're going to carry about 15, 16 boxes of this stuff in that back compartment, giving you lots of opportunity to keep engaging all day long. Now, the vehicle has been protecting American troops since 1988. Its short-range capabilities have been renowned across the Army National Guard and the Army, with three active Army battalions equipped with this vehicle. During Operation Desert Storm in 1991, NATO forces were bolstered by Avengers deployed against Iraqi attacks and they continued serving during Operations Iraqi Freedom in 2003 and Enduring Freedom before being retired from the Marine Corps service at the onset of the War on Terror. Additionally, ceasefire agreements have seen them stationed in Bosnia as well as South Korea for ground security purposes over recent decades, something that is guaranteed into the future due to their numerous upgrades ensuring compatibility across the battlefronts worldwide. The US Army has been relying upon the Avenger defense system to provide medium and short range air protection until a shift in priorities during operations in Afghanistan and Iraq saw its deployments fall away drastically. By 2016, only 400 of the 1,100 systems originally built were still active, with just over 250 now within the Army's active force. 
However, following increased Russian aggressions recently, the Avengers are being redeployed back into Europe in order to fill the Shorad gap which has emerged over the recent years as a result of the inadequate defense capabilities against airborne threats and more specifically low-flying helicopters and, yes you named it, drones. The US Army is strategically deploying Avenger air defense systems to equip the recently established 5th 4th ADAR in Europe. In addition, they are utilizing modern technology and innovation to upgrade their existing Shorad battalions with next generation IAM Shorad striker platforms capable of firing the Longbow Hellfire missile, four Stinger missiles and the 30mm chain gun with a 7.62mm machine gun provided as coax. This is an impressive move towards strengthening national security on foreign soil for air defense. And I've actually done a video on the IM Shorad if you want to go check that out. Interestingly, before this platform, the US Army also used another mobile air defense system armed with Sting missiles, the M6 Linebacker, which was based on the M2 Bradley infantry fighting vehicle chassis and was equipped with a quadruple launcher. The air defense system was adopted in 1997, however was retired in 2006 due to a lack of airborne threat, which again comes back down to my previous point about this being a fairly cheap system overall. The main disadvantage of the system is it does not have the same range or coverage as some of the air defense systems on the market, however this can be mitigated by having more than one Avenger on the battlefield, creating somewhat of a net or a network of Avengers that could provide a huge spectrum or range so to speak of coverage to the air. According to the Army Space and Missile Defense Commands, the Army Air and Missile Defense 2028 document is showing that the most critical near and mid-term capacity gaps are maneuver force protection and countering air threats, and more specifically, drones. Maneuver force protection is being addressed by the growth of the M Shorad battalions. In accordance with the directive, four battalions or 144 systems will be fielded apparently by 2023, with a desired end state of one battalion per division in the active M reserve components. The initial battalions will respond to the urgent needs of the US European Command and the M Shorad units will provide capability against UASs and fixed wing and rotary aircraft threats to maneuver forces. The second capacity and capability gap is countering cruise missiles, yes that is of high speed artillery, mortars or UAS threats that are fixed and semi fixed assets. The Avengers are a bit of a defunct missile defense system and have been revitalized and dispatched to serve on the front lines in order to provide air defenses during maneuver operations during these gaps. Despite their lack of armor making them vulnerable against direct fire weaponry, they are still being utilized as a somewhat stopgap measure until the striker IM Shore platforms can be integrated into existing formations for increased survivability of all battalions and battle groups. The quick deployment of these Avenger battalions offer immediate solutions while offering new defensive technologies such as the Shorad systems time to integrate themselves strategically into each battalion, and that's exactly what they need. In terms of protection though, even in the Gulf War the Avengers were put in semi-permanent prepared positions behind earthen bunkers to protect them from Iraqi tanks. These things are not going to be here for the long haul folks, these Humvee Avengers are really just sort of a temporary measure to keep some protection until the newer systems come out. So they're being pulled out of mothball, revitalized a little bit, give a bit of bit of an upgrade and put back on the firing line, which, you know, is a good thing to have instead of, you know, giving nothing. I mean, safe to say here in Canada, we don't have any Shorad for the most part. Um, it'd be nice to see if maybe uh, we get our own updates in the future, but we will see. I would love to hear your thoughts on the Avenger air defense missile system. Please let me know in the comment section below. If you operate on these vehicles, please also let me know. I'd love to hear from you, you know, thoughts about how they operate. Do you think they're still viable in today's scenario? Personally, the Stinger missile is still very well renowned and capable of what it needs to do. But that is it from me today, folks. Thank you again so much for joining me today. If you have operated on this vehicle, please leave me a uh, comment. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions and your experiences on this vehicle. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave me a like. It really does help out, folks. The algorithm is certainly not on my side with military content. And I'd like to thank everyone for supporting my Patreon and PayPal, those who have been uh, financially supporting the channel. It really means a lot to me. You can also go check out my sponsorship clothing brand, Attire for Effect. Uh, com. They've got some really cool clothing. You should go check them out. And finally, of course, as I said, please uh, click the little bell by the subscribe button so you can be notified of content in the future. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Have a great one. Bye-bye.